Okay, everyone, here's uh, the second part. By the way, I apologize in that first part. You know, I'm passionate about this management side, and that went 30 minutes, but maybe you can break that up more effectively. I uh, trust this part might be a little bit shorter, but of course, if I was talking about this in class, it might even go longer. At any rate, so you have an advantage here. Let's talk about green managing green venues. We've already talked about design. Now let's talk about the management side. First off, our motivations for environmental concern. I think one of the things that's important about this management philosophy today about how we're going to manage that has to do with what what's our motivation for it. Might be just economic cutting costs, and you'll see by some of the statistics that may be what a lot of them are. Maybe regulatory. In San Francisco's case, uh, recycling ordinance says 75% from all uh, has to be divert. 75% uh, of your waste has to be diverted to a landfill. Uh, and so by 2020, that's an important, by all of it, by the way, by 2020, now it's already 75%. Marketing factors, you know, green meetings, industry council, other meeting organizations, we want to be certified, lead. Well, that's a, that's a construction side, but now we're in the operation side. So we want to be certified. So there may be marketing reasons that drive us. And then there may just be a consciousness to be socially responsible and making a determination about where each company, each venue organization's operation or company is, we can look at it kind of in this way. This is a matrix that shows competitive strategies towards this aspect of being green or being socially responsible. If you look at the lower right-hand corner, what you have is the very basics here. These only use existing types of concepts and practices in the green and socially responsible area, and they only do what's basically complying with the laws and the regulations, okay? So they're in it maybe because they have to be. If you move up a little bit to the upper right-hand corner, now you're talking about, well, I still want to just do what's required, but maybe I'll use some of the newer, more uh, progressive kinds of ways to do it. So we use collective activity, leadership in organizations, we lobby for change, uh, maybe we even use uh, carbon offsets, which I'll talk about, in terms of we offer them to our customers. Then you move to the left side, and what you see here are the voluntary. These are the true, in my opinion, these are the true socially responsible companies. The lower right hand, or lower left hand quadrant talks about the non-structural foundation. Okay, they, they're willing to do things but they want to use only what's existing. They're not going to try new things, but they can see ways to save money. They can divert things into landfills. They can uh, use materials like recycled paper and so on and so forth that are existing. And then you have the true visionaries towards the corporate social responsibility and the green meetings, as green venue aspect. And those are the emerging, emerging uh, and voluntary. So they're willing to differentiate themselves by doing things differently and maybe the building was built like we saw in Vancouver with a green roof, but now how do we use that to take that through the whole organization and not just be a, an operation saving aspect of it. But as you'll see here by this chart of a study that was done of operations, and what you see here is the number one issue, the biggest single factor that venue operators, convention venue operators said was, was costs. Okay, that was the main thing. The critical issue was costs. So what is that? That's a regulatory aspect of it, right? That's just in the lower right-hand corner. And then if you look at the reasons why they do it, again, it's saving money is number one. Then perhaps it's being a role model, uh, staying ahead, giving back. Now those sound a little bit more like you're moving to the left side and you're trying to get voluntarily involved and you're trying to do more things. So perhaps the future here is that you have to justify it by cost, but then you can build on it by doing things that are socially responsible once you've proven the cost aspect. So meeting managers, organizers of events have a number of issues that they're bringing to the table today to the convention center facilities. And it's important to look at what these factors are. This is a typical five-day conference of 2,500 people. Uh, and their environmental usage. Look at the number of plates, napkins, cups. I mean, think of how many greenhouse gases were uh, were used by the people that traveled there from different places. You know, we're using a tremendous amount. Exhibitions and conventions are big users of the environment. 
That's why this is becoming a concern. So green meeting and exhibitions on site, what they are looking for today is they want reuse of decorations, they want recycled environmental products, they want to avoid printed notes, reuse and collect back uh, name tags to be able to use another time and lanyards and so on. Uh, you saw that with the show photo I showed you with HKCEC for the uh, for the scavenger hunt. For those of you who haven't had it yet, I'll show it to you later. Um, you use a website uh, as an informal uh, pool aspect in terms of how you uh, how you disseminate information. Uh, E-surveys after the meeting. All these kind of things are what we're looking for on site. Transportation wise, choosing destinations uh, where they're near most members. So that's up to you as a venue to understand that and where the people are coming from, especially when you're trying to attract them. Uh, locate hotel uh, and center in a walkable distance. You know, know those factors. Uh, low carbon uh, method of transportation. Do you have electrical vehicles and so on? Uh, is there an official uh, carrier or a shuttle that you can, can use in the process and so on? All these things are, are issues that planners are now asking of facilities themselves. So what can you do as a meeting manager then to become more uh, green and more sustainable? Well, this is important for us as a venue to understand. Basic operations. I'm not going to go through all these, but these are just some of the ideas. Uh, marketing materials. That's a big factor uh, in terms of what we use out there. In my special events, uh, special topics and convention and events, we go through these in a lot more detail. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's a critical uh, point here in terms of what we do and how we uh, how we do it better. Uh, food and beverage is a big factor. Are we using bulk containers? Are we using uh, local uh, food uh, producers within a, a, a within a close region so we don't have to import and bring things from long distances? All these are things that meeting managers are asking for so we as a venue then have to understand those and be able to let them know what we provide. Meeting location, eliminating shuttles, walking distance, educating attendees on public transportation and routes. We need to produce that as a venue. We need to be able to give planners that information as a venue. More specifically, related to the exhibition operations, which are probably the biggest user of the environment in our field, is you know, we have to minimize reducing uh, lights and, and uh, HVAC, heating and air conditioning, from move in and move out. So what if it gets a little hot? Uh, natural gas forklifts and so on. Uh, minimizing transportation to and from the show uh, and the trucks that so on that transport the material into the facilities itself. Uh, reusable magazine bins, uh, corn-based uh, starch products for tabletops, uh, compostable waste basket liners, uh, use of several options for recycling carpet. That's a big factor. UBM uh, told me and Michael Duck that that's a huge factor for them is this ability to recycle carpet because they constantly roll in carpet on these concrete floors that they're dealing with. So exhibitions are a big factor. And what venues and exhibition organizers should let, uh, what exhibition or, excuse me, what venue and exhibition organizers should let exhibitors know is, you know, what they're doing and how to, how to stay on top of that. What, and how to recycle things and where to put things and what they're doing in, in, with environmental responsible giveaways. Or in the case of Oracle World, uh, in San Francisco, they don't allow any giveaways on the floor any longer, and they don't allow any brochures to be given out. Everything has to be done electronically, and these are all factors that we need to consider and be able to support and even make recommendations on from the convention venue perspective. So what specific actions should the venue take? What kind of things can a venue actually do? Well, here's some examples here of some of the practices of convention venues. Uh, number one, paper uh, and recycling of paper, using cardboard, plastics, and so on. Those are all factors that, that we, these are big, big users of these kind of things that shows. What do we do with those materials afterwards? And then in our own operations, the cleaning materials that we use, you know, those are the chemicals that we use. Those are the kind of things, and you see that number one on the list of what venues are about. Carbon offsetting is another thing that we can work with. What is carbon offsetting? Carbon offset says when people travel, a certain amount of carbon dioxide emissions are given off from how they get there, by transportation, by the food that we get from to, to there in the process and the cost of that transportation, all those kind of things. So, you know, what they do is they enable 
uh, people, the, the offsetting allows anyone to reduce their climate footprint by doing supporting projects. Okay, things that I'll talk about in a minute in terms of different aspects of what we can do to replace the carbon dioxide with oxygen, if you will. So what does the carbon offset have to do with meetings and exhibitions? Uh, well, we have to mitigate that carbon emission when our attendees are traveling to meetings. We have to be able to balance it off, or as we'll talk about, carbon neutral. We have to offset that value-added component for our attendees and show them by PR what we're doing. In other words, we have to move up in the quadrant to the voluntary uh, and emerging kinds of ideas. Uh, attendees could feel good about participating in these, but there may be a cost to them. So we have to decide who's going to pay for that, us or them. So what does it mean for an event to be carbon neutral? It means that we're offsetting, we're buying enough offsets to mitigate all those carbon emissions that are being given off. So we issue uh, uh, exhibitors are not shipping uh, and included, and shipping not included through, though, in terms of what we mean by offsetting neutral. We don't always know how much is being shipped. We'll be a little bit clear about that. We don't always know what is being shipped by exhibitors and where it's coming from. That's a harder thing to track. So it's harder to be neutral on that. But we know where they're coming from, we know what materials are coming in, and we can work on how many, we can calculate how many emissions we have, and then we can offset it. And we offset it through working with organizations that plant trees. Sounds pretty simple, right? We work with an organization for every certain amount of carbon used, we plant a number of trees that give off oxygen. Renewable energy projects like, um, like wind-generated turbines and solar projects. Uh, and we look at offsets for retired and donated uh, aspects to corporations and food banks and so on could be there. If you look at this website, climateservices.com, you'll see an example of a company that works with conventions and venues, conven conventions and the convention venues, to help with their offsets. How do we cal calculate it? Well, there's a number of different sources online you can find that will uh, calculate your carbon offset and then you estimate how much is being used and that tells you uh, over a period of time how much you need to buy of offsets in order to make yourself neutral. So let's look at what's being done in Hong Kong because I think Hong Kong is an area that has a lot of growth in this area needs needs to make a lot of growth in this area. I think we're only touching the surface. Hong Kong is not what I would consider to be a green destination. Now those of you that have done the scavenger hunt, you've already looked for some of these things. Some of you at HKCEC and at uh, AWE and so on. Uh, those of you that are still going to do it, uh, you'll find that there will be some uh, examples of that uh, when you do that. HKCEC, for example. 2009, they had over 13,000 uh, kilograms of glass bottles uh, and 140,000 kilograms of paper were recycled. So they're doing recycling. Uh, they've They've used variable speeds on their fans uh, and reduced the escalator so that the escalator only goes when people are on it. Uh, the green roof uh, with 30% planting. And they participated in Earth Hour and 2009-2010 for whatever that's worth. I mean, it makes a statement, but I don't know. Are they, where are they in that quadrant? Are they doing just what's required or are they being proactive? I'm not sure. I mean, that's your evaluation. How about AWE? Okay, they have a recycling contractor. Uh, they use a thermal storage plant and a free cooling system to operate their air conditioning effectively. Again, they participated in Earth Hour. They planted hundreds of trees in the marshalling area, so maybe that's another way to offset it there. And of course, because of their proximity to the airport, they're in a position where they can say, this is an advantage of us over, let's say, the competition in terms of uh, being more green. So again, where do they stand in the quadrant? That's the question that you might need to ask yourself. And perhaps that's a question you might get asked later. Okay, now that completes our discussion on the venue management side. And of course, we're going to hear more from our student presentations on the various venues and what they're doing.